top six counting formulas? Do you know them all? Count ifs is awesome, but sometimes it's easier to use filter or sum and if. Now here's our setup. We have payment method and amount. And if we're going to talk about counting, we have to talk about logical tests. Now let's start with the easiest one first, a single condition. I just want to count from this column how many times a customer paid with cash. Well, of course, we use count ifs. Criteria range and criteria. Those are the two arguments we're going to need to use. Now, sometimes people get confused between those two. Just remember the word range. That means a bunch of items. So I'm going to go up to the top of the column, and with my black downward pointing arrow, I'm going to click. I'm selecting all the possible items to count, comma. I don't want to count them all. I just want to count the ones that are cash. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and we get a count of 41. Now, when you move to two or more conditions, you're either doing an AND logical test or an OR logical test. Now, for an AND logical test, all tests must come out true. The only time you're going to get a true is when both are true. For an OR logical test, you only need one or more true. So the only time you get a false is when you get false, false. Now, for the AND logical test counting example, we have two conditions. And we're going to ask this question. Hey, is the payment method from this column equal to PayPal? And is the amount less than 50 bucks? Now, anytime you're doing an AND logical test in counting, the perfect function is count ifs. And that's because the default logical test in count ifs and max ifs, min ifs, and other functions is an AND logical test. Criteria range 1, that's going to be our first column. I select the entire column, comma, the criteria to match against that column, PayPal, comma. Criteria range 2, this is our second column amount, comma. Now the next condition uses a comparative operator. And we have a choice. We can put the number into the cell and type the comparative operator in the formula, or we can type them both into a single cell. And here's the difference. If you want to use this number in some other formula and have it as a number, then you have to do it this method. In double quotes, you have to put your comparative operator. And this is true for count ifs, sum ifs, and those other functions. And then you have to join it using the join operator to whatever the cell is. And that's our formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and we get a count of 21. Now, if you're never going to use the number from the cell as a number somewhere else, and you don't mind it looking like that, this is easy. We just type that in, put it as a cell reference, close parentheses, Control Enter, and we get the same count. Now, when you're doing an OR logical test, Lots of people throughout Excel history have gotten in big trouble because they didn't know the difference between a mutually exclusive set of categories and ones that are not mutually exclusive. When you have categories like Visa and greater than 350, those two conditions are coming from two columns. So you risk the chance of double counting. When you have two categories like Visa and MasterCard, they're coming from the same column. A given payment method is never going to be both Visa and MasterCard. In this case, we're never going to have to worry about double counting. The other thing is that COUNTIFS does not do an OR logical test, at least not by default. Now, this OR logical test is just saying, hey, what's the payment method from the single column, MasterCard or Visa? One easy way to do this that doesn't get into trouble with double counting is we can just use two count ifs. That's the single condition MasterCard. That's the single condition Visa. They each get a count, and then you add. And that's a perfectly acceptable formula. But here, I'm going to show you what I usually do. Count ifs. And guess what? Criteria range 1, well, there's only one column, comma. And then in criteria 1, that argument is expecting a single item. But if we put the two items that are coming from a single column in, because those are two items, K 
count ifs will deliver two answers, one for MasterCard, one for Visa. Now there's a special name for this type of calculation. This is really more than one item, so it's an array. And this is a function argument. So we call this a function argument array operation. And an array operation is when you do an operation and it delivers more than one answer. So when I control enter, there's the count for MasterCard. There's the count for Visa. Well, what do we want to do? We want to add. So we'll use the sum function. Close parentheses. And when I hit enter, we get 96. All right, so those are the two methods for categories that are mutually exclusive. Now what do we do if the categories are not mutually exclusive? Here's our logical test. We want to find Visa in this column. And then from a second column, the Amount column, we want to ask the question, is the amount greater than or equal to 350? And we can see the overlap in this record. If we were counting both columns individually, like we did for our mutually exclusive count up here, well, we get a count of 1 and 1. If we added them together, that would be 2, and that would be double counting. What we really want is a count of 1 for the record. Now, one way to do this is to count all of the visas and then all of the amounts that are greater than or equal to 350. If we added those together, we get a double count. But guess what? That record right there matches an AND logical test, visa AND greater than 350. So all we have to do is subtract the count based on an AND logical test. We have a 1 and a 1 here, but when we subtract the AND, we get the correct count. Now instead of doing it with three count ifs, there are a few other methods. Now the first method is the filter method. Now filter takes an array, which for us will be the entire table. And then in include, that's where we put our logical test. And then filter will filter the tables down to just the records that match. And then we'll count how many rows there are. All right, so for array, in the upper left corner, I see the diagonal black arrow. I click. That table is named S, comma. Now for include, we're going to build two logical tests. And it's going to be different than inside of count ifs. We're going to build the logical test using comparative operators directly against the column. Now we have two tests, so we'll put them both inside of parentheses. I'm selecting the entire payment column. And then I say equals Visa. Notice we're making a direct operation against the entire column. If I were to just highlight this and hit F9, that's a bunch of trues and falses. Control Z. And when we're doing an OR logical test, we use the plus symbol for addition. If you're doing an AND logical test, as we'll see in just a moment, you use the multiplication symbol. Now we put our second test in. And there's no such thing as a greater than or equal to operator. So you have to put two separate operators in back to back, greater than and then equal to. 350. Now we close. Now anytime you do a math operation on trues and falses, it will convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. Now imagine this. For this record right here, I'm going to get true and true. Well, if I add true plus true, that's really 1 plus 1. So I'll get a 2. Over here, I'll get 1 plus 0. The result will be 1. And here, False, false is 0, 0, so the result will be 0. If I select F9, there's our beautiful array of trues and falses, where 1 and 2 is true and 0 is false. Now the great thing about logical functions in Excel, filter, if, and, and many others, is that they interpret any non-zero number as true and 0 as false. So that will filter out all the rows that have a 0. Control Z, close parentheses, Control Enter. And there's our filtered table. Now what do we want to do? We want to count the rows, so F2. And then we use the rows function. That just counts rows. Close parentheses, and there's the count, 82. 
Now we'll see an alternative in just a moment, but the nice thing about this formula is that you can see the filtered table, and then it's just a matter of counting the rows. Now let's look at an alternative. Now I'll click Include, and I want to copy. And down here, we'll do an old school formula that will work in any version. We'll use the if function, and in logical test, control V, those are trues and falses. Well, what do I want? If it's a true, I want to count the record. So comma, in value of true, we put a 1. And we don't put anything in value of false. That way, a false value will be inserted. If I close an F9, I get a bunch of 1s and falses. And the great thing is, if I put this inside the sum function, all aggregate functions, sum, average, max, min, they're all programmed to ignore logical values like false. So Control Z, sum, won't be bothered by those false values, and we'll just add the 1s to get 82. So let me know down in the comments, do you like rows and filter, sum and if, or a bunch of count ifs? Now, we're also allowed to mix and match or an AND. Here we have an AND logical test checking the amount against a lower and upper limit. That's the AND. And we'll say that or PayPal. We could also visualize it this way. For a record to be included, the amount has to be greater than or equal to 50 bucks and less than 100. Or the record has to have the payment method, PayPal. Now I'm going to use the sum and if. And in the logical test, notice we had to put amount twice. We checked it against the lower limit and the upper limit. Since both have to be true, we multiply. Then that will deliver trues and falses. And of course, multiplication will happen before addition. So we'll get a bunch of trues and falses. And then here's the other part of the OR logical test. That'll be trues and falses. And the plus will do its job. F9, we get 1s and 2s, which mean true. The zeros are false. Control Z, that if, F9, there's the 1s and falses. Control Z, that some can add. And we can definitely use rows and filter, the same logical test and include. And this time, we're counting rows, and we get the same answer. Now, this is definitely an option, but it's much harder than our lovely sum and if and rows and filter. Now, to differentiate between these two logical tests, notice that AND is inside of OR. So if we write out the logic explicitly, we run the AND first, then we say OR PayPal. Down here, OR is inside of AND. So we have to run the OR first, then we say AND, the amount is equal to 100. Now, because we have OR inside of AND, if we're going to use the SUM and IF method, we have to be careful, because the OR has to be calculated first. So for this OR with the plus, you have to put extra parentheses around to force the plus to happen before multiplication. But guess what? Because we don't have different comparative operators, and our logical test is equal to exactly 100, that means we just have cell references that can go in the formula. You're not going to believe how easy this is. Remember, the OR is inside the AND. And the default behavior for count ifs is and. So we can simply use count ifs. And I'm going to do the or first. So I highlight payment method, comma, do a function argument array operation for those two items, close, control enter. I get two answers. Right now we have two counts, PayPal or Apple. But what we really want is PayPal and 100 bucks or Apple and 100 bucks. Well, count ifs makes this easy, because it's going to run an AND logical test when I comma for criteria range 2. We put amount, comma, and exactly equal to 100. Now it will say PayPal and 100, Apple and 100. We'll get the two numbers, Control Enter, 5 and 3, F2, and then we add. Close, Control-Enter, and bam, we get a count of 8. 
So as you can see, when you're counting and you're doing a simple single condition, count ifs is perfect. And logical test, well, count ifs is perfect because that's the default behavior. For an or logical test with mutually exclusive categories, well, count ifs can do that if you do a function argument array operation and then put it in sum. When the categories are not mutually exclusive, well, you can use rows and filter. And then right inside of include, you build your logical test. Or you take that logical test, put it in the first argument of if, and say, hey, all I want when I see a true is 1, and then sum. When we have multiple comparative operators, then it's almost e always easier to go ahead and build the Boolean logical test and either put it in sum and if or rows and filter. But when we have a bunch of single conditions and we're running an or inside of and, bam, that's the easiest way to go. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.